Good morning. Pat Utek traveled from Satellite Beach to Key West to say goodbye to an old friend. The USNS Vandenberg, home for a goodly number of people for a long, long time. He kept watch over this missile tracking ship in Port Canaveral for nearly 20 years. Kind of shocking, you know, in a way to, to see the old lady looking kind of, kind of dowdy right now. This is one of the last times he'll ever see her again. The ship has been cleaned, holes cut in the sides to help it sink fast and keel down. From this point on, it will serve as an artificial reef. Pat and other veterans wanted to see their ship one more time and remember the story that began more than 50 years ago. Before it tracked missiles, it was a World War II transport ship called the Harry Taylor. It carried American troops to battles in Europe. After Hitler surrendered, the ship was supposed to carry American troops to war in the Pacific. We were being transported uh, uh, by the Navy to our point of destination of Manila, which was preparing for the invasion of Japan. That was the purpose. The war had ended in Europe, and we're, we're getting ready for the invasion of Japan. And uh, we, arrived, we were on our way, and we decided, the captain decided to come across the Atlantic and go through Panama to go to Manila instead of going down through Suez. After they dropped the two bombs, we thought, well, we're still going on our course to Manila. However, the second day after the bombing in Nagasaki, the captain got on and made the announcement. He said, uh, men, watch the bow of the ship as we turn and head for her. And we all, you know, you could hear a pin drop in the Atlantic because he could have said Calcutta, Canada, whatever. He said New York. And here we have all these men, 3,500 men on board ship. And you could almost feel the ship coming out of the water for joy <laughs> that we were definitely going to go home. They ordered this ship into New York City. And we happened to be one of the first troop ships to be diverted in that manner. The uh, tremendous joy of going into New York was un undescribable. After World War II, we faced a Cold War and space race with the Soviet Union. Both sides were building rockets that could either take a man to the moon or carry bombs that could destroy entire cities. We needed a ship that could peek behind the Iron Curtain and gather top secret information on Russian rocket tests. So this transport ship turned into a missile tracking ship. Our government loaded it with state-of-the-art radar and tracking equipment and renamed it the Vandenberg. The ship sailed to the Bering Sea to help us prepare the best defense from a Russian rocket attack. The ship was originally built as a mobile platform because you couldn't put land-based radar stations every place in the world, but you could move the ship just about any place you wanted. But the end results went back in to determine how to tell the difference between an actual missile and a decoy. So, you know, the decoys were put there to divert attention to something else so that the real important object would get through to its destination. It was extremely valuable to see what was going on so that you could isolate and say, this is what we can see in real time and how we can take countermeasures against it. We used to joke and say, we could track a basketball at a distance of 500 miles. And then somebody else could say, well, could you tell the difference between a flathead screw and a Phillips head screw? That was a bit of an exaggeration, but it wasn't far from that. It won't help win the Cold War. I mean, it fought as hard as anybody else. It was the data collecting business, but uh, the data we collected on American missiles and the data we collected on Russian missiles all fed into the great balance of terror and mutual assured destruction thing that uh, was a part of the Cold War. After helping win the Cold War, the Central Florida veterans who sailed aboard the Vandenberg are pleased to see it honored again as an artificial reef. I think it's the best disposition that could happen. Her sister ship was cut up in, in Taiwan and just melted down. My feeling was one of elation, that that was a far better destination than being cut up because she'd retain her place in history. I can say this for a large number of people. We were thrilled at where she was going. This was a hardworking ship. We, we, we did a lot of useful things in this life, and this is just the final useful thing. When organizers were selecting the ship that would be sunk as an artificial reef in Key West, the USNS Vandenberg emerged as the best candidate. We picked the Vandenberg out of, a, out of an inventory of about 400 ships. We liked it because of all the, of all of the topside uh, structure. We figured it would hold more fish that way. 
and it was listed as a low hazmat ship suitable for artificial reefs. So we wanted a clean ship. The organizers asked Vandenberg veterans to help select a site for an on-ship memorial to honor all who served aboard it. Vandenberg veteran Jack Steele of Satellite Beach died in 2003. He was the first to ask that his ashes go down with the ship and become part of the ship's last mission as an artificial reef. So there were questions raised long ago by a very good personal friend who had been the manager of the ship for a number of years. And he and his, his wife and his daughters wanted his ashes to be entombed on the ship. And then there were others that died that said, me too. We could take this back and the picture back and show it to his wife that we really did get it here. Tell me a little bit about Jack. One of the greatest guys I ever knew, really. Compassionate, technically knowledgeable, a great manager, a good friend, lousy bridge partner. <laughs> but, uh... Gave me my first real job out here. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to be employed by RCA. Paid for my college education. After years of preparation, the ship was finally ready for its final mission. Veterans watched their ship slip beneath the surface and honored the great men and women lost and all of those who served aboard the ship with a military burial ceremony. Thank you, Lord God, for Jack Steele and all who sailed in Taylor and Vandenberg. Thank you for the contributions of the ship and the personnel to the history of our country and to preserving peace. Bless us today, especially bless the Vandenberg vets and their families but also all military and all of those who have contributed to the defense of our country. May we always be the land of the free and the home of the brave. In your name, amen. Therese Steele is the widow of Jack Steele, whose ashes are now with the Vandenberg. The Vandenberg played a big part in her family's life. They grew up with it. Their dad was on it for close to 40 years, involved with three of the ships, the Vandenberg, the Arnold, and the Redstone. So the ships became part of our family. Their dad would go to sea for three or four months, tracking the missiles in the Pacific, and come back home, and it was always a joy. And we would be in Port Canaveral, the ships would come home to that pier. And the Vandenberg was a beautiful white ship, and you could see it coming out of the Atlantic Ocean into Port Canaveral. The ships were 40 years of our life. We knew where their dad was. We would help, you know, make sure he understood that we were okay. And it was just a wonderful life. It really was, we enjoyed it. She needed to be preserved. She had done so much work. She had sailed in World War II. She had been a Cold War ship when my husband was on it. Uh, as you know, that was when we were kind of watching Russia and they were watching us. And it needed to be preserved. It had a lot of history to it. She deserves to be honored. She did an awful lot for our country. We enjoyed our position uh, to watch the, the sinking of the uh, Vandenberg or the Taylor. And it, it was uh, just, to me, it was just an end of another part of American history. And I think it was, uh, we should thank everyone that was involved in the project. It was no small thing to, to accomplish, and uh, America should be great that they have a record of the ship when it was started out and where it ended, and what the purpose of it is for being sunk off the coast of Florida. The families of the veterans who served on this ship also developed a unique connection. It's like we were one big family. The wives would contact each other, make sure we were all okay, uh, because the men were gone for three and four months. And sometimes they didn't get back to Port Canaveral. They sailed into Hawaii or the West Coast shipyards. They sailed into San Francisco quite a few times. So it, you were family, you know. Uh, and the ships were there, 
most of the wives that were involved, most of them lived there near Port Canaveral, Satellite Beach, Cocoa Beach. And so there was a close tie. We have a camaraderie that, that you can hardly explain when you stop and figure you're living with these men day in and day out for three years. They become your closest contact as family. As far as us being called the greatest generation, I think that is a myth because the greatest generation are the people that came before us to make this country what it really is. Well, not being a diver myself, I know they enjoy the, the fish, the reefs, the color down there, but also remember that this was a World War II ship that saved them and made it possible for them to go down and dive. Because being my age, I get upset sometimes when children don't know about World War II. It's not taught, and we lost so many valuable people, and I just wish that the young people can understand. So the history that the, all of us know that are my age, it's fantastic. And I hope they enjoy the diving very much.